Greetings and welcome to Halfling 13 Gaming. Today we present the first of a new line of gaming as our group revisits the war-torn landscape of Mordheim, a game published by Games Workshop way back in the year 2000. Warbands scramble and fight over the scraps of the city, always on the lookout for weird stone, with danger around every corner. The game is played as an ongoing campaign. Every player creates and maintains a warband which advances, grows, and dies based on the results of each battle. Battles are fast and furious and generally last only a few turns. The Skaven Warband is the Stab Stab and Warp Stealers, a 109 point warband. They come with an Assassin Adept, two Black Skaven, an Eshin Sorcerer, and two Night Runners, and have henchmen of five Verminkin and two Giant Rats. The Undead Warband is Von Dieter's Curse, an 83 point warband. The heroes include a Vampire Lord, a Necromancer, and three Dregs. And the henchmen have a Dire Wolf, three Ghouls, and two Zombies. Although the warbands are finished and painted, the train has been lingering behind. Much has the first coat, but will be improved as we continue to play. All players are required to have a fully painted warband for filming, and the army rosters are kept securely to avoid any temptations. As always, we welcome our viewers, both past and present. Please check the description below for details on any 3D models used in our games. If you enjoy this content, drop a like on this video or subscribe to the channel, or any of our other support options. Leave us a comment if, to let us know if you, what you did or did not like about this battle or the video format. We're here to engage with the audience and improve the channel. Your support and feedback is appreciated and helps us continue creating content. More time videos will be sporadic at this point, while additional warbands are prepared and we firm up the filming schedule. We start our battle with the Skaven Warband arranged at one end of the board and the undead army at the other end of the board. Both units ready to face off against each other. Turn one for the Skaven is simple as the entire force just moves forward at full speed. Meanwhile, the undead forces shamble forward, taking a shot at long range with their bow, but miss the target. On the second round, the Skaven continue to race forward, closing the distance, unable to shoot their slings at this range. The undead respond by charging forward with their dire wolf, Zombies attempt to shuffle forward, but are out of reach of the Skaven forces. Now that we've reached shooting range, arrows fly from the undead, but fail to hit any of the Skaven. Following the charge, the dire wolf lunges and snaps at the giant rat, but fails to strike any fur. Facing fear from the undead forces, the Skaven only successfully managed to charge with a single giant rat. The rest of the Skaven move forward ready to their slings. Although the Eshin Sorcerer is unable to cast his spell, a volley of rocks from the slings managed to knock down both the, both a zombie and two of the dregs. Meanwhile, the giant rat and the dire wolf continue to fight with each other, unable to get any advantage. Now in combat range, the vampire and two ghouls charge forward, one engaging the Skaven, the other engaging the giant rat. The only ranged attack is from the necromancer with her bow, who unfortunately misses the shot after a dreg steps in the way of the arrow shot. With the charges, the vampire dispatches the Skaven, the giant rat is defeated, and another Skaven is knocked down by one of the ghouls. The dire wolf and the giant rat continue to fight ineffectively. Back to the Skaven's turn, they attempt to rally against the undead, but the overwhelming fear causes them to hesitate and stand their ground, not able to engage. There's another hail of stones from the various Skaven slings, but at the end, only a single zombie is knocked to the ground. In an ineffective round of melee, the Night Runner fights the ghoul, and the giant rat fights the dire wolf. Neither are able to make any success on either side. The tide turning in the favor of the undead, most of the forces charge forward to engage the rats, leaving only a dreg, a zombie, and the necromancer behind the lines.
Although the Necromancer's arrow is again ineffective, the melee is more decisive. Two ghouls manage to defeat one of the night runners, while the vampire knocks and stuns the other night runner. In the center, the vermin kid managed to defeat one of the ghouls. Still intimidated against the undead fear, only one Skaven is able to be brave enough to step up against the vampire to try to save his buddy. With the sounds of a thousand squeaks, the Eshen Sorcerer is able to cast his uh, non-doom spell, which overwhelms the vampire and knocks him to the ground. Meanwhile, the, Sk the Skaven slings are ineffective against the undead for another round. With a momentary advantage, the vermin kid dive on the vampire, but their knives are unable to penetrate his toughness. In the center, the assassin manages to defeat one of the zombies and turn the tide of the battle. Overwhelmed by the Skaven, the vampire lord orders a retreat, and the undead melt into the shadows of Mortime. Part of the fun of Mortime is the post-battle sequence. The undead are first up, rolling a successful result of 18, having four surviving heroes. That generates four pieces of warp stone, which converts to 65 gold for their warband. No special events or character advances are earned from XP, and the survival rolls result in both the dredge and both henchmen surviving from the battle. On the Skaven side, they roll much better, with a total roll of 25, having four surviving heroes plus one for the victory. That scores five pieces of warp stone and 70 gold after the conversion. They roll a successful they roll a successful event, finding a catacombs, which would be useful in the next battle, but no character advances are earned from their XP. Again, successful rolls for both their heroes as well as their Birmingham allow all of their characters to survive. Thank you for watching this video to the end made it this far, please consider a like on the video or subscribe to be notified for future content. Leave a comment for the players if you have any suggestions for improvements or tactics changes, or just to ask why an option was or was not taken.